when the cell just divides, the meiosis II starts. As you can see in the diagram, because now we know that after meiosis I, one cell is divided into two cells, each with a half set of chromosomes, each with a half number of chromosomes. Uh, in case of human beings, for example, if there were 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs, then each daughter cell after meiosis I now will have 23 chromosomes, one from each homologue. In case of um, an organism, for example, which have uh, a 16 total chromosomes in eight pairs, both daughter cells will now have eight chromosomes each. That is one set and all are recombined. So recombination is done. Now both of these cells will enter into the meiosis II. Meiosis II, so it means that meiosis II will occur in the cells, in the two cells which are already produced by the meiosis I. You can see the first cell is dividing and the second cell is also dividing. The meiosis II is just like the mitosis. In the meiosis II, first phase is prophase. We call it prophase II because um, this is uh, the prophase of the meiosis II. In prophase uh, II, the chromosomes, they appear, they become visible under the microscope because of the condensation, because they are condensed, they are thickened and um, the centrioles start moving in the animal cells, centrioles start moving towards the poles and they start making the spindle fibers and uh, again at the end of the prophase, the nuclear membrane will disappear at uh, about end of the prophase two, the nuclear membrane disappears and the chromosomes and spindle fibers are there in place in the center. After the end of prophase uh, two, metaphase two starts. But in the metaphase two, the chromosomes now arrange themselves on the equatorial plate. Now, as we know, they are duplicated and now each sister chromatid is attached with the, the spindle fibers with the help of separate kinetochores like that of mitosis. And uh, they arrange themselves on the equatorial plate. As you can see, this is observable in both cells that they are arranged on the equatorial plate. And now each sister chromatid is separately attached with the spindle fiber. Then comes the anaphase two. In anaphase two, the chromosomes start separating from each other because the spindle fibers, they start pulling these chromosomes towards the poles. And now because each sister chromatid was separately attached to a spindle fiber by its own kinetochore, each sister chromatid moved towards the poles. So the result is an equal number of chromosomes distributed towards each pole. When the anaphase two ends, then comes the telophase two. In the telophase two, the chromosomes in equal numbers now reached at the poles, nuclear membrane starts forming, nuclear material uh, start decondensing again and become invisible as that of the interface. The spindle fibers, they are um, deformed, they are degraded and the, each cell is divided into two, makes total of the four. So in meiosis one, what happened? That one cell is divided into two, each with a half number of chromosomes, but both of these cells, which were the products of the meiosis one were individually divided by another phase of meiosis called meiosis two. And the end products of uh, these um, uh, two cells is four cells, uh, all with a half number of chromosomes because reduction is already complete in the meiosis one. So this is how by one mother cell in the germ lines, germline cells is divided into four cells, four daughter cells, either sperms or eggs, which have a half number of chromosomes in each. There is another difference um, at, uh, uh, in the meiosis between the males and the females. Uh, in males, one, uh, one germline cell divides into four equal sized cells. Uh, it means that one germline cell, cell makes four sperms with all with a haploid number of chromosomes, n number of chromosomes. But in females, there is a difference. As you can see in the diagram, when after the meiosis one, which is the reduction division, chromosome number become one half. But when the cell divides, it divides unequally. It means that 
chromosome number is half in both of the cells, but the cytoplasm and the cytoplasmic contents goes more towards one cell and the other cell though have equal number of chromosomes but have fewer parts of cytoplasm and the others which results in one cell which is large which is uh, called a secondary oocyte and the other is called a polar body which is very small. Next division, in the next division the polar body again divides but uh, it divides that is in the meiosis 2 it divides into equal size cells but the secondary oocyte that is um, the other cell which is larger in size is again divided by meiosis 2 but this division is again an unequal division. The result is in a very large ovum and a second polar body. So it means that in a female the cells as you can see in the diagram one cell the primary oocyte is divided into four cells but three of these are called polar bodies which are small in size and which are discarded and uh, the one uh, which is larger in size is called the ovum and uh, this is retained for fertilization. So there is a difference between the uh, meiosis in males and females in this regard. Now we do compare the processes of uh, mitosis and meiosis. As we know that uh, mitosis divides the cell, one cell, somatic cell into two daughter cells. But in meiosis one cell, the parent cell or the mother cell is divided into four daughter cells. In mitosis, this is alike in males and females. The somatic cells of uh, males and females or every type of cells, their division in males and females is not different from each other. They are just alike. But meiosis is uh, different in males and females because three are polar bodies and one is an ovum in the females but in males all of the four are mm, sperms. Then in mitosis, the chromosome number remains same. In the daughter cells, we call it 2n. After mitosis, 2n number of chromosomes is retained. But in meiosis, the chromosome number is reduced to one half in the daughter cells. Um, either these are four or one, the chromosome number is one half in the gametes. So mitosis and meiosis, they are different from each other and mitosis occur in the somatic cells, meiosis occur in the germline.